In this GED Social Studies preparation video, we will be looking at all the kinds of questions you should expect on the Using Numbers and Graphs in Social Studies section. Don't forget to check out ultimateged.com for everything you need to pass all the GED subjects. Let's dive in. Read the excerpt on the Boston Tea Party in 1773 and answer the following question. In 1773, the British Parliament passed the Tea Act, giving one company control over tea sales in the American colonies. Many colonists saw this as unfair and protested against it. On December 16, a group of colonists, disguised as Mohawk Indians, boarded British ships in Boston Harbor and dumped 342 chests of tea into the water. This protest became known as the Boston Tea Party. The British government responded by passing the Coercive Acts, which punished Boston by closing its harbor and limiting local government. These strict measures made tensions worse between Britain and the colonies. While the Tea Party didn't directly cause the Revolutionary War, it was a key event that contributed to the growing conflict. Which of the following best shows a cause and effect relationship from the passage? This question is a great example of evaluating the difference between correlation and causation. You will be required to examine carefully statements, passage, or evidence, and decide if there is a real cause and effect relationship, or if the connection is just a coincidence. A correlation is when two things happen at the same time, or one after the other, but one does not necessarily cause the other. They are connected in timing, but not necessarily in cause. Whereas causation means that one thing directly causes another thing to happen. It is a cause and effect relationship. Now let's go through the answer choices. Option A says, Colonists protested the Tea Act by dumping tea into Boston Harbor. That's correct. This is a clear cause and effect relationship. In the excerpt, the cause is when the Tea Act was passed by the British government in 1773. And the effect of this was when the colonists responded by dumping 342 chests of tea into the water. This was the colonist protest. The passage directly explains the colonist action as a result of the Tea Act that was passed. Now, since we are looking for the best answer, let's continue going through the other answer options. Option B says, the Boston Tea Party led directly to the start of the American Revolution. That's incorrect. Although this may look like a cause and effect, it is not accurate based on the passage. The passage says that the Tea Party didn't directly cause the Revolutionary War. The Tea Party rather made tensions worse and contributed to it, but it wasn't the one thing that started the war. So this is more of a correlation. Two events that happened one after the other, but not a direct cause. Option C says, Colonists disguised themselves as Mohawk Indians because they admired native culture. That's incorrect. This is not supported by the passage at all. There's no evidence in the text that admiration for native culture was the reason for the disguise. The passage tells us that the colonists disguised themselves as Mohawk Indians and boarded the British ships. This act was done to hide their identity and board the British ships in order to carry out what they had planned next, that is, dumping the chests of tea into the water. So the statement in option C is inaccurate and does not show a valid cause and effect. Option D says, The British East India Company wanted to sell more tea, so Parliament passed the Coercive Acts. That's incorrect. This mixes up two different events in the order in which they happened. In the passage, the British Parliament passed the Tea Act in 1773 to help the company sell more tea in American colonies. This was the first event that happened. The coercive acts, the other event, came later, after the Boston Tea Party, the event before, had happened. And the coercive act happened as punishment, and not to help sell tea. So the statement in option D confuses the timeline. It makes an incorrect connection between two events that don't follow each other and are not related as cause and effect. So the correct answer is A. Colonists protested the Tea Act by dumping tea into Boston Harbor. Before we move on to the next question, please encourage us to post more videos and help more students pass 
by liking, sharing, and subscribing. The graph below shows the trend in women representation in the U.S. oil and gas workforce from year 2018 to 2023. Based on the graph, how much did women's representation increase from 2018 to 2023 in percentage points? This is a great example of a data interpretation question on the GED social studies test. These types of questions often require you to read a graph, pull out the right numbers, and use a bit of math to find the answer. To solve this, we find the difference in percentage points for women's representation between the year 2023 and that of the year 2018. So let's go to our graph and find the percentage values for the years 2018 and 2023. Let's first find the percentage value for the year 2018. So when we look at our graph, we see that the percentage value in the year 2018 is 22%. So let's write that here. Now let's find the percentage value for the year 2023. So when we look at our graph, we see that the percentage value in the year 2023 is 26%. So let's write that also here. Thus, we have the percentage difference between the year 2018 and 2023 as 26% minus 22%. Note that in finding the difference, we chose the bigger percentage value, 26% first, and then the smaller percentage value, 22% second. So 26% minus 22% equals 4%. Thus, the increase in women's representation from the year 2018 to the year 2023 is 4 percentage points. So when we look through our answer options, the correct answer is therefore option C, 4 percentage points. Read the excerpt from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency on the impact of plastic waste and answer the following question. Plastics are used in almost everything, but they create a major environmental problem. In 2018, the US produced 35.7 million tons of plastic, but only 8.7% was recycled. That means most plastic ends up in landfills or pollutes the environment, where it can last for hundreds of years. This pollution harms wildlife and ecosystems. To fix the problem, the EPA says we need better product design, stronger recycling systems, and more responsible plastic use. Which graph represents the relationship discussed in the excerpt? This question tests your ability to identify independent and dependent variables, then explain or choose how the two variables are related. A variable is something you are measuring or observing. A variable can be a person, place, thing or condition in an experiment or study. An independent variable is what you change on purpose. It's the cause, the part that you control to see how it affects something else. A dependent variable is what changes as a result. It's the effect, it depends on what you changed in the independent variable. Now let's break down the excerpt by EPA into simpler words and determine our independent and dependent variables. Let's place the independent and dependent variables in a table to make things clear. So in our excerpt, EPA is saying that if we produce more plastic, we get more plastic waste in our environment. Here the independent variable is plastic production and the dependent variable is plastic waste in our environment. So based on the excerpt, if plastic production increases, then plastic waste in our environment also increases. This is the relationship between the independent variable, plastic production, and the dependent variable, plastic waste in our environment. Next, the EPA is also saying that if we recycle less, we get more plastic pollution in our land and water. Here the independent variable is recycling, and the dependent variable is plastic pollution. So based on the excerpt, if recycling decreases, then plastic pollution increases. This is the relationship between the independent variable, recycling, and the dependent variable, plastic pollution. And finally, EPA is saying that if we don't change how we design and use plastic, more animals and ecosystems are going to get hurt. Here the independent variable is design and use of plastic, whereas the dependent variable is the damage to animals and the ecosystems.
So based on the excerpt, if the design and use of plastic decreases, then the damage to animals and ecosystem increases. This is the relationship between the independent variable, design and use of plastic, and the dependent variable, damage to animals and ecosystem. Note that the relationships between each independent variable and its respective dependent variable here is what we will be looking for in our answer options. Now let's go through the answer choices. Option A. This shows a line graph that says that as plastic production, which is the independent variable, increases plastic waste in landfills, which is the dependent variable, decreases. That's not correct. This relationship does not correctly show what is discussed in the excerpt. This relationship would only be true if recycling was very effective, leading to less waste. But the excerpt says only a small percent is recycled, and most plastic ends up as waste. Option B. This shows a line graph that says that as plastic production, which is the independent variable, increases, the plastic waste in landfills, which is the dependent variable, remains constant. That's incorrect. This relationship does not correctly show what is discussed in the excerpt. The excerpt shows that plastic use is increasing, and waste is also a growing environmental problem. This means that the plastic waste doesn't stay the same. It increases with more plastic production. So there is no constant relationship between them. Option C. This shows a line graph that says that as plastic production, which is the independent variable, increases, the plastic waste in landfills, which is the dependent variable, also increases. That's correct. In the excerpt, it says the U.S. generated 35.7 million tons of plastic in 2018, and only 8.7% was recycled. So, most of the plastic waste ended up in landfills or as pollution. This line graph shows a direct relationship, exactly as discussed in the excerpt, that is, the more plastics are made, the more waste is created. Option D. This shows a line graph that says that as plastic consumption, which is the independent variable, increases, plastic pollution, which is the dependent variable, decreases. That's incorrect. This does not correctly show the relationship as discussed in the excerpt. Although, this relationship would be an ideal scenario suggesting that Americans are managing waste better, even when they're using more plastic. The data presented in the excerpt says otherwise. The data tells us that only a small portion is recycled, so most plastics ends up in landfills or as pollution in the environment. Thus, the plastic pollution is not going down. It is a growing issue. So the correct answer is C. The line graph showing that as plastic production, which is the independent variable, increases, the plastic waste in landfills, which is the dependent variable, also increases. According to the World Bank and United Nations Population Division, 2022, find below a table of the top five countries with the largest rural population. What is the range in the population from the five rural areas listed in the table? You may use a calculator. This question is a great example of how the GED Social Studies test uses statistics. You'll often need to look at a graph, chart, or table, find the right numbers, and do a little math to get the answer. To solve this, we use the formula for finding range. The range of population is the biggest population minus the smallest population. Now let's use the table to find the biggest and smallest populations. Looking at the table, you'll notice the rural area, Uttar Pradesh, located in India, has the biggest population, with 880 million, and the Dhaka division, located in Bangladesh, has the smallest population, with 100 million. So we will have 880 million minus 100 million, which equals to 780 million. Thus, the range of rural population for the five countries is 780 million. So when we look through our answer options, the correct answer is therefore option A, 780 million. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more.
Check out our other GED videos on YouTube. Don't forget to visit ultimateged.com for more exclusive content, a GED social group, complete GED math course, and take a free test.